Hi there guys, this is Nikhil from Greedy Tech and this is my list of top 60 apps for 2015 and as you can see there aren't 60 apps in this because this is just the part 1 of the series or just the part 1 so there are more than 20 apps in each part just because I have my personal preferences in it so guys let's get started so the first app is CalQ I guess what that's what they call it so it's a simple calculator with history so whenever you do a calculation you can go back and see what it was so I had this specific need so I personally like this calculator so the next app is authenticator by Google so if you're having two-step verification you don't need to wait for a SMS or a phone call from Google for the OTP you can use this app to sign into your two-step verification account make sure you use the two-step verification for your primary Gmail account so the next app is Flexi which is a keyboard uh, it's not my personal preference or it's not my first personal preference so let me just show you what it can do so we don't have the swipe feature over here so we have to simply type and when I press space it will do an auto correction I'm just typing some garbage so this is how the auto correct works and just in case if you are not satisfied with the previous word or if you don't want the autocorrect to happen for the last word you can simply swipe up it will replace with the word that you have typed it has some nice gifs and emojis so it pulls up this information from the web and next we can simply swipe back to delete the last word or swipe right for a space or a dot and we can swipe down using two fingers to compress the keyboard or remove the space bar we can do that to bring it back once again once we have typed something let's say we can swipe up so as you can see it has corrected it to according so if i'm not satisfied with this word i can swipe down to see other suggestions and once I'm satisfied with the suggestion, I can swipe right for a space. And to enter numbers, I can use this toggle or I can simply press and hold on any key and it will give me this nice flow kind of a thing. And I just need to hover on the letter or character and simply release to insert that particular character. So on the whole, it's a nice app with gestures. So guys, let's go to our next app. So guys, the next app is Peak, which is a game for your brain. So it has some simple games like these to keep your brain sharp so let me just show you a quick demonstration so it is very similar to Lumosity I guess but it's way cheaper than that so we need to match the word with the color below so there you have it it's a pretty good app to use to try it the next app in our list is follow show which is which you can use to track all your tv shows let's say you watch some tv shows and want to keep track of them you can use this app to do that so if i go to my calendar so nothing's there on 20th december i have homeland if you watch a lot of tv shows then you can know which show is airing on which day so it's a pretty good app do give it a try the next app is your window which is a weather app so this is how it looks I can simply swipe right or swipe left to change the timing and I can see a nice animation in the background showing how the weather will be if it's raining or if it's going to rain I am going to see a nice animation of rain and if it snows I'll see that animation too so a very nice interactive app the next app is gallery vault so guys this is the gallery vault you can basically hide any kind of file using this particular application you can basically add those files from here just press the plus button and you can add any type of file it will compress and hide those files from your file browser or any other application on your phone you can unhide or access all those files using this application the best thing about this app is you can move all your hidden files to your SD card you can make a backup of it you can restore from the backup you can export all your hidden files to a particular folder or unhide all your files to their respective places or folders. So a pretty good app, do give it a try. 
The next app is Tasker. I hope most of you know about this. It is an automation app and it has been the best app for automation since many years. The UI hasn't changed for quite a bit now but it still works very well. So the next app is Greenify which I hope most of you know which is used to stop applications from running in the background. So it works well with root access and if you have exposed frameworks it works way better. So do give it a try. Next app is Pushbullet which you can use to send links, images, files less than 25 MB by default to your device to any other device running Pushbullet or you can easily share any links or any information with your friends using this Pushbullet. It also syncs or mirrors your notifications and SMS. You can reply to your SMS from your Google Chrome browser if you install the Pushbullet extension and sign it with the same Google account as you have signed in on this device. So it has notification mirroring, SMS sync, you can reply to SMS. It even syncs clipboard just in case if you are interested in that. So a pretty nice app. The next app in our list is Inbox by Google. It's been around for quite some time now and recently they added a feature for auto suggest in reply. So if I have a personal email, I can go to reply and I can see some auto suggestions. So anyway guys, do give it a try. The next app in our list is Folder Sync which is a very nice app to sync files on your device or folders from your device with folders in your cloud storage say Dropbox or Google Drive. So here we have it we have the file manager sync status and accounts we need to add our Google accounts or we need to add our cloud accounts over here. It has all kinds of cloud accounts starting from ranging from Dropbox to Google Drive to even Amazon S3. So it syncs the files very well but I had problems with the two-way sync. So anyway let's go on with the next app. So the next app is Google's Cardboard which is its VR application. So you can basically browse the Google Earth maps and do some interesting stuff using this particular application. So the next app is Facelock Pro. I was looking for an application which can do a face lock. So we have face lock for lock screen but I wanted the same for each and every application. So I use this particular app and it works really well. So currently it's disabled. I've just activated it. So that's pretty much how it works. So do give it a try. On the free version you can only lock the lock screen, play store and settings. So I had to buy the pro version for extensive use. It's really, it's really one of these. The next app in my list is Disk Usage which visualizes your internal storage. So it scans through all your files and folders and visually represents how much each particular folder is occupying. In this way I can easily know how much each folder is occupying and which folders to delete in case I am running out of storage. So the next app in the list is OneNote which I'm pretty sure most of you know. It's the Android version for the Microsoft's famous OneNote. It's basically a note-taking app and I don't personally use it to take notes but I just use it to read notes. So anyway, next app in the list is Better Battery Stats which has been a standard for monitoring your battery status. So it gives you all kind of information about your battery like screen on time, how much battery a particular application was draining and it works really well and requires root access. Next app in our list is Feedly which can be used to keep track of all your favorite websites all at a single place. So all you need to do is add the website that you want to follow to Feedly and every time a new blog post is released on the website it gets added to this list and you can watch them very easily. A very nice app. The next app is Linkbubble which is basically a browser like Facebook chat head. So let me just quickly open Google. Now if I try to open some links, you can see that it's opening up in this bubble. So while the web page loads on the background, I can do anything that I want. And once I'm done with my work, I can go check out the web pages. So it saves you a lot of time. On the free version of Linkbubble, you can only open one link at a time. So once again, I had to buy the pro version. The next app is QuickPick, which is basically a gallery. 
which is very fast and gives you a lot of information. You get your normal stuff like showing files in your folders or sorting all the images according to time. But additionally, I like this particular feature that says show in map. So if the image has any location based information, it will show you in the Google Maps. There are other gallery apps that might do that, but I personally like that. Next, this is Google Maps, which probably everyone know about. But recently they have added the feature for navigation in offline maps. Now you can download any map you want and also do a search and have navigation even when you're offline. So these are my offline areas. So I can name them whatever I want. So that's pretty much it about Google Maps. And finally we have the Cam Scanner which is basically a document scanner app. It takes a picture of any document or any image and enhances the image to sharpen the text. It has both the Android version and the web version and I'm pretty sure it has an app for Apple too. And if you are having the Pro version you can sync all your documents with Evernote or Dropbox. You can even backup and restore all your notes or documents and you can even move all these documents to your SD card. So that's pretty much it guys for this video. So do check out my other videos for top 60 apps of 2015. So if you like this video give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you have any recommendations do let me know by commenting below this video. And if you found this video to be helpful give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel to see more videos just like this.